butchers. Stupid. Just for the killing. Not for food, not for anything. Just for the stupid, senseless killing. We haven't had trouble with poachers in a long time. I wonder where these came from. No, it's just one. See? It's just one horse. Yeah. Bill, you go back and join Adam and Horse, will you? I'm gonna follow these tracks for a spell. Think maybe I better go with you. This fellow seems pretty free with a gun. Oh. You got a lot of work to do. Your brothers will need your help. Besides, any man do a thing like this, there isn't any backbone anyway. You get along, Joseph. Sure you don't want me to go with you? I'll be all right. You watch yourself, Bob. do is get home. How far did you say that was from Sacramento? When I left, it was 48 miles. I don't figure it's moved in the last five years. It's a sense you ain't. When you get to that way station tomorrow, you can fork off to Dry Bluff. Shouldn't take you more than a day to get there. Look, Gannon, you got us this far. That's enough. I don't need no more organizing. Hey. Come on out of it. You'll be home tomorrow. Yeah, what kind of problem you got? You're gone three lousy years. What can happen to a farm? Yeah, look at me. I had a wife, a store, a good business. Now I lost five years out of my life. Anybody out there? Shot. I ride and he must have been shot too. We better get out of here. Why should we run? We ain't done nothing. Well, maybe not. But you still got the smell of Huntsville prison on you. We all have. It's in that suit of clothes they gave you. When they start asking questions, the 
finger's gonna end up pointing right here. I've heard that. Once you've served time, they don't let you forget it. Now, they're gonna be like that, not where I come from. Well, you can stay if you want to. I'm getting out of here. Not that I got anything to hide. Yeah, how do we know that? He was out hunting by yourself all afternoon. Well, so are you. And you come back with game. We all did. Yeah, we're all in this together. Well, let's get out of here. We'll keep the horse. That way we'll get a little extra time in case they come looking for it. Well, he's lame. Only thing he's gonna do is hold us up. Well, all right. All right, let, it, let him go, but hurry up about it. Come on, Paige, come on. Stinking prison. What in the world is this? Well, I went out looking for some poachers this afternoon. We were worried about him when his horse came limping in with his saddle on. We rode back out to Oak Draw where Joe saw our paw the last time. Found a campfire there. It looked like two or three men had been around. I found some of Paul's horse tracks there, but we didn't see no sign of our paw. We should have tried looking for him right away. Joe, you can't track men in the dark. You know that. We'd have just been fumbling around out there. Now, boys, what makes you so sure your paw's dead? Roy, that's my paw's blood on that saddle. He was killed by some stinking lousy poacher. Just a minute. We found this uh, and some ashes around the campfire. That's for prison. That's right. Roy, if my pa found men like that, convicts, poachers, they wouldn't think any more about killing him than they would shooting a deer. I believe you're right. Boys, here's what we're going to do. First off, I'm going to wear Huntsville. I'll find out if there's any prisoners that have been released or escaped from there lately. Then I'm going to get a posse. And I'm going to start looking for your pa. I know it ain't going to be easy to get a posse together this time of night. But I'll get some. Believe me that. You boys can wait here. No, Roy, we're not going to do any waiting. We're going back to the campsite. It'll be dawn by the time we get there and we get to start tracking. Now, you just hold on. That's all right if you want to go looking for him. But if you find him, remember, that's a case for the law. Now, you remember that. Just get your posse together. <laughs> My name's Cartwright. I'd like to ask you a few questions. No, but I don't answer no questions. Yeah, this is important, old man. Look, look, I, I just mind my relay horses and, and, and mind my own business, and that's all. Now, look, look, I said we want to talk to you, old man. Now, look, you go fly a fish. I'm not scared of you. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Pete's my name. Pete. We've been riding all night. We're kind of tired. My uh, younger brother here is a little tired and a little touchier than the rest of us, so... What he's trying to say is that we uh, want to buy some information. Oh, well, well that, that, that makes a mighty difference. <laughs> you know, gee, th this must have been my lucky day. You know, you know, early this morning, three four other fellas came in here and, and they gave me a dollar too. Other fellas? What fellas? Well, they, they rode in about dawn and, and, and they gave me a dollar to, to fix them up with some coffee and some beans. Well, that's what we want to know. Now, was there another man with him, an older man with gray hair? Nope. No, they, were, they were just young fellas, and they were in an awful hurry. How many of them were there? Three. Three young fellas, all hungry and all in a hurry. What'd they look like? Well, I don't know. You see, last week I broke my glasses, so, so I couldn't tell you what they looked like. What else do you know, aside from the fact that they were young? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was one. Uh, there was one they called Paige. And then there was another fella, and he didn't have a coat. What else? Well, while they were eating their victuals, I took the horses uh, down to the water trough to, to water them. And I noticed there was a, a rifle uh, on one of the saddles, all covered in oil skin. I, uh, I took a look at it, and uh, it sure was a mighty fine rifle. It had a letter C on it. Yeah, yeah, it, it sure did. In silver. Does that mean something? Yes, it does. Now, do you remember which one of them had the gun? No. No, uh, three men got on three horses and rode away. That's all. Which way? Oh, let me see. They, they went every which way. Uh, give us a straight answer, will you, please? Uh, I gave you a straight answer. They all went in different directions. One fellow went up the mountain towards Kobe. Another one went west and another went south. That's what I meant. Uh, they went every which way. All right, this is where we split up. Look, look, fella. 
What have they done? They killed our pa. They killed your pa? Well, if I'd known that, I never would have took nothing from them. Not a cent. Now, which one do you want, Joe? I'll take the one that went up to Kobe. I'll head south. You're going to kill him? You're going to kill him like they killed your pa? Let's go. Now, now, you're going to be all right, mister. You got Jacob J. Dorman's word on it. Where am I? Right now, you're recovering from two bullet wounds. Now, that one knocked you out long enough for me to get the one out of your shoulder. Yeah, I'm glad you came, too. I was hoping for some company. We still got 20 miles to Carson City. Carson City? Easy, easy. I was due there the day before yesterday. You cost me almost a whole day. I found you just off the trail. I couldn't leave you to bleed to death, and I was too far behind schedule to take you all the way back to Virginia City. Uh, I gotta get back. Are you, uh... Are you in trouble with the law? No. I gotta get back to my ranch. Just outside of Virginia City. Ponderosa. Oh, the Ponderosa. Yeah, I think I heard of that. Do you think you can get to the wagon? All right, then. Just take it easy. Move slowly. Slowly, that's it. It's slowly there. Yeah, no, yeah, don't right. rush it. I'm all right. I got a friend in Carson City, a very good doctor. It might be smart to stop in and see him. Yeah, it's too far. I gotta get back to, to my ranch, the Ponderosa. I'm, I'm Ben Cartwright. Well, once we get to Carson no, City, I'm sure too, you'll be able to... It's too far. My, my family... The family will be worried. Oh. I gotta get back to them. I don't know. Carson City's always been a big stop for me. Whatever it is up there. Well, I might lose as much as 70 or 80 dollars. Mr. Dorman, why don't you say you might lose as much as a hundred dollars even? <laughs> Let's just say that. What's your family gonna think? You must have been gone two days now. You say two days? Well, that's right. And I tell you, it's it's been a job tending you. Getting you to swallow water. You must be out of the mines with worry. <sighs> you probably think I'm dead. Well, maybe they're out looking for whoever it is who shot you. Yeah. No, no, no. They, those boys of mine, they're intelligent men. They're grown men, intelligent. They wouldn't do anything rash. That oldest boy of mine, Adam? Oh, he's real calm in an emergency. Real calm. All right, let's try it again. I told you, mister, I don't, I don't know nothing. I just said if there was some money in it, I might be able to get a hold of someone. Well, I've got a hold of you, and that's all I need. Now, we'll try it once more. He should have come through here sometime yesterday. He came from Huntsville Prison. Have you said, fella? 33, maybe? 34? All I know is he's one of three men. His name might be Page, and he might be carrying a rifle with an inlaid stock. How bad you want to know? In dollars and cents, I mean. Save your money, mister. He can't tell you anything. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Just trying to pick up a couple extra bucks. Well, now, if you want to know anything, try me, mister. I get around town pretty good. And there's no charge. My name's Jeannie. Here. Compliments of the house. This man you're looking for. You said he came from Huntsville Prison? I suppose you're here to take him back. No, I won't be taking him back. Oh? 
Well, I think I know the man. He used to work here. He was in town the other day asking for his old job. Where is he now? They didn't have anything for him. But I slipped him a few dollars and he said he was off for San Francisco. San Francisco, huh? That's right. He left yesterday. Thank you for the information. Well, aren't you going to use it? Well, there's plenty of time I think I'd like to eat first. Well, I have some errands to do. If you're still here. When I get back, maybe you'll buy me a drink. I consider that a pleasure, ma'am. Honey, just look at this yardage. All the way from Kansas City. Oh, you did a much better job of choosing it than I could have. Five years wasn't enough, was it? You in that prison, and me waiting in that saloon. What are you talking about? There's a man in the bar looking for you. You did pull something on the way here, didn't you? Honey, I swear to you. Didn't you? Well, if there was this incident on the trail. It didn't amount to anything. I meant to tell you about it. Why don't you tell me about it? Who are you? What do you want? I tell you, I didn't do anything. Just tell me about it. Well, there were three of us, and we were taking a shortcut across this ranch. The Ponderosa. Yeah, that was it. But we were just passing through. And that night, this horse came wandering into our camp. He had blood on his saddle. We got scared and we ran. Now, look, mister, I don't know what the rest of them did, but I didn't do anything, I swear to you. You knew a man was hurt, and yet you didn't go looking for him, huh? Well, we were scared. We just got out of prison. Now, who was going to believe us? Now, look, I, I know maybe we did the wrong thing running like that, but well, I didn't know who this fellow was riding out there at night. That was my father. He found you poaching. You shot him. You stole his rifle. We traced his horse back to your campfire. No, you can't prove that. You can't prove any of that. You're just trying to shake me down for money. That's what it is, honey. You run on down and get the sheriff. You almost did it, didn't you? No, look, Mr. I, I was out of my mind for a minute. Five years in prison. Just the, the chance of going back. Jeannie, tell him I wouldn't do anything like that. I'm not interested in your character references. No, please. I, 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 lo I lost my head. I, I grabbed the gun. Like maybe that was the way it happened that night, huh? No, no. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll wait for you outside. You gotta come out sooner or later. And when you do, bring this with you. Mister! Please. Now, now think for a minute. Look, you think I, I killed your daddy and stole his gun. Now, why would I do a thing like that? What would I gain by it? Look, I, I got everything I want right here. I got a wife who waited and worked for me for five years. We're starting fresh. Now, why would I want to shoot him? For a gun?
guess it must be a fine thing to be blessed by the Lord with three strong sons. Fine thing indeed. <laughs> three strong lads could be quite a comfort to a man. Yep. Quite a responsibility, too. Uh, could you, uh, get your horse to manage a livelier gate? I don't want my sons to worry more than they have to. Get up! I thought you said that oldest boy of yours would be able to handle it, being so smart and all. Oh, he'll, uh, he'll handle it all right. But if father, father worries, and nevertheless, you tend to see in your children only what you hope you'll see, I guess. No, I don't think Adam could do anything without giving it some real deep thought. Any more than horse could do anything without giving it some real deep feeling. Horse? My middle boy. Oh, sir. Strong back, I bet you. But kind of slow. Hmm? Yeah, he's strong. But if by slow you mean slow to anger, slow to condemn, or slow to hurt living things, yeah, I guess you might say he was slow. Looking for a man named Page. Some, some folks told me you owned this place. That's right. That's my pa you're talking about. Your pa? Look, has your pa been off on a long trip? Just got back? Yep. Three years he's been away. That's why the farm looks so run down. But me and pa will have a needle and a pin soon. Where's your pa now? He's working the field. What do you want to know for? You a friend of his? Let's, uh, let's just say I know your pa. Why do you say so? Where were you stationed with him? Stationed? Yeah. I bet it was Fort Pierce. When he was in the artillery. He was too big to be in the cavalry. He was a map, too, you know. No. No, I didn't know. My pa was away in the army for three years. My uncle read me all his letters, though. So if you was at Fort Pierce with him, I'd know all about you. Yeah, well, maybe he just forgot to mention me or something. No, he wouldn't have. He never forgot nothing. I was a Corporal Jackson of Fort Pierce. Pa said he's pretty fat. Look, ain't you got some place you're supposed to be, boy? Danny. Danny Page. Horse Cartwright. I don't know. His pa ever mentioned that name. 
Look, I knew your paw, and that's all there is to it now. Why don't you run along and pester somebody else, huh? Sure. You staying for supper? No. No, I ain't. How come you ain't staying for supper? Look, ain't you got nobody else you can go pester? I told you, my pa's out in the field somewhere. My uncle's in town. My ma's off on a trip. Your ma? When's your ma gonna be back? I don't know. She left a long time ago, just before Pa went off to the army. I see. I stayed with my uncle while my Pa is in the army. I asked him about it, but he said I wouldn't understand. But I understood all right. You did? Sure. Ma borrowed some money from Pa so she can go on a trip with a friend of hers from town. I think his name was Harry, but I don't remember too good. Anyways, Paul went after him to make sure they got off all right. And then he came back and went into the army. I never exactly figured out why. I guess it must have been to make some more money. Yeah, yeah, I reckon that was it. Hey, I think my pa's coming. Hello, son. Hi, Pa. A friend of yours from the army come to see you. He says his name is Hoss. Cartwright. Can I help you? Get the boy out of here. What? I said get rid of the boy. What are you talking about? Look, I don't want to hurt the boy. Now get rid of him. Go in the barn, Danny. But, Pa! Go ahead, do like I tell you. Hurry up now. Now, what's all this about? I'm after the man that killed my father. I don't know what you're talking about. What's that got to do with me? Two days ago, you and two other fellows from Huntsville Prison rode across our ranch. My pa caught you poaching and you shot him. You got no proof of that. I got all the proof I need. Now you're gonna pay for it. But please, mister, I, I ain't never killed nobody. Sure you ain't. That's the reason you spent three years in the penitentiary, ain't it? Because you ain't killed nobody. You killed your wife, didn't you? You don't understand. She deserved to die. You decided that, didn't you? Just like you decided that my paw deserved to die. No. I spent my time for that. I ain't never gonna kill again. Is that why you carry that gun? Man fresh out of prison, why he... You know, he's, he's got to be careful. People blame him for things. Yeah, that's right. Just like I'm doing right now. You better get ready to use that gun. Now, now you saw my son. He's been waiting three years for me. What's he going to do without a paw? I don't know. I ain't got used to the idea myself yet. Now you get ready. just wasn't any other explanation. What with you missing and the horse coming back and the blood and all? Me and the posse just scoured about every foot of that entire section looking for you. All right, Roy. Now, where are the boys? 
Have some the coffee, Mr. Doman. Well, ben, they figured that you was dry gulch, that you was dead, and they went after the three fellas that they figured that was responsible for... Ben, I just never seen them boys like that. When'd they leave? It was the night before last. I just got this telegram here from Huntsville Prison, gave me the names of the three men that had been released. Now I wired the sheriff's closest to them, hoping that they'd get there in time. Well, you know my boys better than that. Yeah, I do. And I also know that they figured that their father had been murdered. Here, take this coffee. I'm going over and get the doc. Be good for you. I don't know. If it was me, I'd feel pretty good knowing I had three boys ready to kill anyone who did me in. Oh. Oh. They've been taught the exact opposite. Then why are you worried? I don't know. Why does any father worry? It's like when you plant seeds blind. You don't know whether they're going to grow and keep growing long after you pass knowing and gone. Well, from what you tell me about your two oldest boys, it don't seem likely they're too apt to go against what they've been taught. You, uh... Didn't tell me much about your third boy. I don't know how much I know about that third boy of mine. He's quick-tempered. Sometimes I, I see an anger in him that... Three wives, three sons, all of them so different. So you got doubts about what he'll do? No. No, I guess I... I got doubts about me. About whether I was able to make him understand. I'm looking for a man. Would have ridden in the last few days from the south. Come on, all I want is an answer to my question. I couldn't tell you, mister. Okay. Probably be without a jacket. Might be carrying a fancy rifle with a silver C on the stock. Does that help any? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'll tell you when to leave. Leave him alone. He can't help you. <clears throat> All right, then maybe you can help me, mister. For heaven's sakes, none of us can help you, I tell you. Take what you want, but leave us in peace. Everybody's here like you asked, mister. Bartender, give me a pen and a piece of paper. Now, look, we've been here all afternoon. Nobody's going to tell you nothing. My name's Joseph Cartwright. I'm writing a promissory note in the amount of $5,000. This note will be good in any bank in Virginia City. You all know the information that I'm after. The man who gives me that information will receive this money. All right, here it is. $5,000. Now, one of you is going to tell me what I want to know. You all know that. And when he does, he gets this. Every single penny of it. Just don't wait too long. I'll be outside.
that him? That's the man, Colonel. We told him nothing, Colonel. He even tried to bribe us, but Take we him told out. him nothing, Colonel. I'm Colonel Abel Chapin. These are Chapin men, and that's Chapin dirt you're eating. Who are you, and what do you want? I've been looking for him. What do you want with him? I want to kill him. You know him? Don't lie to me, Billy. I swear to you, Pa, I never seen All him. All right. What do you claim he did? He killed my father. That's my father's rifle he's got with him. It's like I told you, Pa, I bought this from one of them fellas I come back with. What call I got to steal a rifle? I don't know, Billy. I stopped trying to give reasons for the things you've done a long time ago. Pa, I swear to God. If you're lying, don't make it worse by blaspheming. I'm gonna let you go. Pa. Shut up. I'm letting you go, but come back here and you're a dead man. Come, Don, you look around. As far as your eye can see, I'm the law. Judge, jury, and hangman. Remember that. And consider yourself lucky. Take him off the ranch and turn him loose. You know better than to bring his lies back here again. So, Pa, you, uh, you give me a chance at him. Uh, I'll make sure you don't ever come back. No, stay away from him. You're protected here. Alone, away from the ranch, you wouldn't have a chance against a man like that. You wouldn't even understand him. Let him go. All right, I'll handle it now. You're going back to the ranch. But the colonel said to let I him... said get out! Anything should happen to him. Ain't nothing gonna happen to him unless he tries to escape. Now get out! Go on, move. You hear this Billy Chapin talking? Now move! I'm going to do what my pa's afraid to do.
He's here. He's going to be all right. Hey, Paul. Paul, dog gone. I thought you was gone for sure. No. no. What happened? Oh, some fella took a couple of shots at me. Couldn't see who it was, though. A fella? You mean there's only one of them? Yeah. Just the one fella. Just the one. Mr. Mr. Dorman here, he found me lying on the trail. And picked me up and took me along with him. And before I come to, I was on my way to Carson City. How are you, sir? Uh, your brother just told us what happened to him. How about you? I found my man. But I couldn't go through with it. What he said to me made sense. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Couldn't do it. What'd you do with him? I left him with the sheriff there, uh, holding him for an investigation. What? Well, pretty generally the same thing happened to me, Paul. I found my man. He had a, he had a little son, cute little fella. I just didn't have the stomach to go through with it. I don't reckon that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, you know, it makes, uh, makes a lot of sense, son. In my business, a man can count himself lucky if he's two-thirds successful. Little Joe ain't back. Uh, you boys have been riding quite a bit, won't you? Why don't you get up to bed and rest up? Well, uh... Doc said you ought to get some sleep, too, you know, and, uh, don't worry about Joe. Ah, uh, he's hot-tempered, but he's still one of your sons, Paul. Why don't we all go to bed? Even if Joe did find his man, and he did kill him, he did it believing that that man had killed you. An eye for an eye. Is that what you boys have been taught to believe? Not what I'm trying to say. I know what you're trying to say, Adam, and I, I thank you for it. This is not something that little Joe has to think out. He either believes it in his heart or... Hey. I heard something. You've been hearing something all night. No, but this is for real. Tell me you are right. I was afraid to believe it. How do you feel? I'm a fine boy. Fine. See, so you got Paul's rifle. So you found your man. Yeah, I found him. Nobody deserved killing like he did, but I couldn't do it. Did your rifle point at him, had my finger on the trigger, but I just couldn't pull it. Maybe it was because it was your rifle. Took him to his father. He confessed. Sheriff Coffey's gonna go out and pick him up sometime tomorrow. You, you look tired. I haven't paid you what I owe you. I, uh, 
kind of lied to you about Carson City. Never was much of a stop for me. Never done more than four dollars worth of business there in my life. If you so, Mr. Dorman, I, I feel I owe you a great deal. I've been paid. I hope you'll come by to visit next time you pass this way. I'll make a point of it. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Cartwright.